Hey, so you've probably heard of live streaming. It's all the rage right now. And you've probably also heard of OBS Studio. Well, today we will begin our journey into the OBS Studio software that's used for streaming, broadcasting, and recording on a gentle introduction to OBS Studio. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. We bring you the inside tips on making great digital film and video. A few months back, we did a video on OBS to Zoom, which showed you how to take the output of OBS and bring it into the input of Zoom so you can have more compelling, you know, presentations when you're on that boring live stream or whatever to listen to your tax guy or whatever it is, right? A few people watched that video. Well, maybe more than just a few. Feel free to take a look at that video. In fact, I think you should take a look at that video if you're here to discover OBS Studio because it'll give you a lot of good background about where OBS Studio is coming from and this entire shift of you know, live streaming. Um, what the TriCaster does is what OBS Studio is in some way attempting to do and to also be free. Now, I've been streaming on Twitch for about two years, a little over two years, and I even built my own dedicated streaming PC to do just that. That's all it does. It just streams and it uses, it's, it's built around OBS Studio. But what is OBS Studio? Good question. So look, in a nutshell, OBS Studio is kind of your one-stop shop for streaming, recording, and broadcasting your presentations. OBS Studio is a massively popular program for live streaming right now. Head over to obsproject.com and click on the download for the version that you want to run. I'm running the Windows version, but like we said, there's a Windows, a Mac, and a Linux version. They're similar. They're not exactly the same. Um, there are some features that are available in the Windows version since it's probably the most mature version. And that's the one that I roll with. In fact, my streaming PC is a Windows PC. And what I'll be showing you today is on the Windows version. The Mac version and the Linux version, very similar. They may be missing things here and there, or things may be a little different. So just to let you know, Windows version is what we're going with here. I'm going to show you a simple example of what can be done with OBS. Before we get into any of the interface, let's just look at a quick super simple example of how we can use OBS Studio. All right, first things first is I'm going to, remember, don't worry about a lot of stuff yet. We're gonna just do this. I'm gonna shrink it down so I can take a look at this folder that has a couple of assets that I wanna use for my stream. So let's say I'm making a stream, I'm gonna stream a game, okay? So I have, a, let's see, a background. I'm gonna just drag that in, okay? Notice I could just drag it right into the interface. It's a little big. These, these stripy lines means it's bigger than the screen. One thing I can do is I can grab uh, one of these anchors here, which you're very used to seeing in a lot of programs, and I can stretch it out just to be big enough, bigger than the screen. Even though it's off the screen, um, it's fine, okay? And it shows up in one of my sources. Like I said, don't worry about the names yet. We'll go over them. Um, I'm gonna add, uh, let's add a video capture device which is the webcam on my laptop. So I'm gonna come down here to add video capture device. And I'm just gonna call it um, webcam because I always, always suggest you name your sources. Like I said, we'll talk about it. We're gonna make sure I make sources visible in there. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm going to choose my integrated webcam, even though I have a little stuff. Hey, hey, there I am. And I'm just gonna hit okay. And there I am. Cool. I can drag it around. Great. Not too sexy. Well, I'm sexy. But the interface is not too sexy. I have an animated border here. I'm going to grab this border and I'm just going to drop it in like I did before. It's kind of big. Once again, I can scale it down. And here's what we do. We're going to scale it. We're going to move it. And let's move it to about here. Now, it's... It's actually sitting over because this order matters here. The border is first in terms of viewing, then the webcam, then the background. Uh, just so that I don't confuse myself, I'm going to lock all my 
all my sources. So then now I can't move them by mistake. Yeah, it doesn't look good. This looks like my webcam is, is escaping out of my border. Ah, here's what I can do. If I just unlock the webcam so I can mess around with it a little bit. Oh, what happened to my border? Oh yeah, hang on. My border is a looping animation. So if I come here and I click properties, if I click on the animated border, click properties, I can set it to loop. Once again, don't worry about the speed I'm going. Just take a look, just take a trip with me. I set it to loop, hit OK. Now it'll loop over and over and over again and won't ever disappear. Back to my webcam. If I hold down the Alt key, that allows me to grab one of these control bars and crop the image. So I can crop it all the way by holding down the Alt key. All right, so I'm going to crop it to there. Still holding the Alt key, crop it to here. This is stuff that we will talk about in later episodes, later later category, uh, chapters. And I'm going to lock that again. That's cool. Okay. In our simple example, we're going to play some solitaire. So I happen to have, <laughs> yes, I do. I happen to have solitaire running right here. Cool. We're going to do a, we're going to add a game capture. And we're going to call it solitaire because I always suggest naming your sources. And we're going to say, uh, let's see, capture a specific window. And then we're going to tell it which window and the window is going to be solitaire. And hit OK. Kind of big. It eats up everything on the screen. This time I'm going to uh, right click on my source for the game capture and say transform fit to screen. That shrinks it down a little bit. And then the rest of the way, I'm going to grab one of the control bars and scroll it down. We're going to move it over. All right. And then we're going to lock it. There we go. I have my stream all ready to go out. And we'll talk about the rest of the things. The next thing I would do is I would hit, uh, I would go to settings and set up my streaming service and then just hit stream and I'm ready to go. As of this recording, I'm using OBS Studio version 26.1.1, 64-bit for Windows. You're, uh, if you're in the future, it may look a little different, but basically the interface doesn't really change that much. Okay, um, here we are. Now with every program, you launch the program and you have all these little windows. For with every program, almost everywhere, you'll have your basic menu, file, edit, view, and then you have, uh, you know, help and stuff like that. Pretty much all of the settings and dials and switches are in this menu, with the exception of some buttons in our control area, which is right here. For start streaming, start recording, virtual camera, studio mode, settings, and there's an exit here. Um, this big window is your preview window, but it is also your program window. Now the way I'll try and explain this as simply as possible. The way OBS defaults to loading up is one screen to rule them all. Okay. This screen is doing double duty. Notice if I cl right click it and turn off enable preview, then that screen goes away. And some people will do that to save CPU usage. Generally speaking, you want it on. Okay. The screen is doing double duty. Like I said, it is not only showing you what you need to see to prepare your scene, but it's also showing that scene to your viewers. Okay. I love that people do tutorials on OBS, but one thing they leave out in init initially is the studio mode. Okay. This screen here is acting as your program and as your preview in the same way that Premiere has two Adobe Premiere has two windows. It has one for your clips where you see your sources and another one where you see your, your program, where what's going to be seen by your viewers. This is doing double duty. We'll talk about why it's important to understand that later in later sections. But suffice it to say, if I click on studio mode, now you can see it splits. One is called program and the other one's called preview. Preview is what the operator or, you know, you will be preparing to transition to show in the program, which is what 
your viewers actually see. I won't go too much further into this, but that is an important distinction I think has left out a lot of tutorials for OBS, that this is a broadcast program that defaults in a very simple state. It can get very complicated here because you can create things and prepare them and then transition them over to your program view. We're going to go into studio mode at another point. Down here we have kind of our properties bar where if you have a selected here, let's do that again. Let's 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 add this just border. All right, let's add that border in there. OK, notice how uh, that shows up in sources. And now this properties bar, the status bar, allows us quick access to some of the most um, useful features, whether it be the path to the file, which we can quickly get to the filters that are on that or properties. And we'll talk about that in a little in another episode also. Um, now at the bottom, you have scenes, sources, you have your audio mixer and you have your scene transitions and you have your controls like we talked about before. All right. Scenes and sources. Sources. It's very simple. A source is just an asset. It can be a slideshow. It can be an image. It can be a sound. It can be a capture device like I did here. If I hit the plus key, I say maybe I want to add my, you know, video capture device. And a, a window pops up and says, what do you want to name this video capture device? I highly suggest you always name specifically your capture devices. So if you're if you have a Logitech C922 camera, I'm going to name it C922 camera. If I have multiple ones, maybe I'll say C922. C922 camera A, camera B, camera C. Notice how you can you can you can click the plus, say add, you know, an image and then name it and then browse to the image, right? Or you can simply drag that image in from your desktop. I don't typically do it that way because you're going to have to rename it anyway, so it comes in as the name, but then you can right click it and say rename a source is an element in a scene. We'll leave it at that. And you can have multiple sources, okay, like I showed you in the example. And the order matters. The top is on the top visible layer, then the next, then the next, then the next. So if you want, if your background is in front of <laughs> your media source, animated frames, create new. Hit OK, browse to it. Make sure it's looping. Hit OK. If your animated frames are behind, i.e., underneath, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be visible. All right. In your sources, you have the ability to make them on, to make them visible or not with the eyeball. All right. And you can lock them so that they cannot be moved. Right now I cannot move anything. All right. But if I if I unlock it, I can move it around. Scenes are collections of sources. So my currently my current scene is just called scene and you're always going to have a default scene. It's always going to have you're always going to have one scene when you start OBS and it's going to be called scene and I can rename this also by right clicking. I can right click it, hit rename and call it something else like master scene. And you can have multiple scenes, which we'll talk about. The audio mixer here is where you see your input volume levels. OK, so different things have different input volumes. You're going to want to see your microphone volume versus maybe an animation volume. This is where you get to see all those volumes. And this can be laid out either horizontally the way it is, or if you right click and you say uh, vertical layout, you can make it a nice vertical layout like that. Scene transitions, we'll get into this. This is how uh, scenes are going to transition from one to the other. So if I had multiple scenes, if I had another scene called maybe webcam, when I click to go to that scene, it will use this scene transition that is selected. And so you get a few off the bat, you get a fade, you'll get a cut. 
and you can set the, uh, the, the timing of the fade. And controls, like I mentioned before, is your basic controls for starting stream, starting recording, and such and such, okay? A few things I want to mention before we wrap this up, because I'm going to keep this nice and short in bite-sized chunks. A couple of these, um, these panels are movable, okay? When you load up OBS, they may not seem movable because they aren't, but if you go to View and Docs, you may see this option called Lock UI. If Lock UI is checked, if you uncheck it, now you have the ability to take, notice how it shows the little windows. If I grab the title, and I can move these around. Okay, and I can dock them in certain hot spots. It's very similar to Premiere also. Okay, so I can take my master scene and I can dock it there if I want. Or I can even put one on top of the other like this and it creates tabs. Okay, and that's a way of saving screen real estate. So I can switch between scenes and sources. I'm going to go ahead and take scenes, pull it out and put it next to back to uh, sources. If you ever get lost, if you go to view docs and reset UI, that will put everything back to the default. Another thing I highly suggest you do right this moment is create a new profile and a new scene collection. Profiles, okay, if you notice profiles, you'll always have an untitled, untitled. Profiles basically save everything that is in your general settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit settings now and these are all the cool settings that you can do in OBS. In general, on the general tab, you have things that are general to OBS's usage, um, whether it be which theme you want. There are different themes or dark themes and light theme themes. Um, whether you want to show confirmation dialogues when you start streaming and stop streaming, the, whether things snap on and off. Uh, uh, you know, if you have images, you may want them to snap to the edge of the screen or snap to other sources for easy uh, manipulation. Projectors, which are useful when uh, broadcasting and and so on. There's a lot of neat things here. Um, you have your stream tab where you select your uh, which we want to stream. And there's there's a bunch of neat uh, cut uh, predefined ones for Twitch and YouTube. There are also if you do show all, well, there's a ton of them. OK, and they come preset with some some pretty good uh, preset settings. All right. Output we'll get into. Output controls where uh, what at what video bit rate you're going to be streaming at and what quality you're going to be recording and where your recording is too. Streaming and recording are two separate things. Streaming is, of course, sending out to another uh, service. Recording is going to be, generally speaking, local recording and so on. We'll get into the rest of these, but all of these I'm going to say no for that. All of these are saved under a profile. So everything in a settings is saved under a profile. So do yourself a favor right now. On profile, you want to create a new profile and we're going to name it tutorial. Okay. I'm going to turn off the auto configuration wizard. We're going to save that for another uh, example for another chapter, but I'm going to save this under tutorial. So now my profile I'm using as tutorial. Scene collection is similar. Scene collection will save all of your scenes under, um, uh, 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 under a configuration. So if I have multiple scenes here with multiple sources, but you know maybe I'm doing a different broadcast which will have completely different scenes and sources, this is how I keep control of all of them. So once again, I suggest you go to scene collection, you say new, and to name it tutorial. All right. So you might have a profile for streaming to Twitch and you might have a profile for streaming to YouTube and a different profile for streaming to, uh, you know, whatever. And you can change your scene collections just by picking it from the scene collection uh, list. If you have any questions about stuff that we talked about in this particular chapter of a general introduction to OBS, please post them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer every single one. We read all the comments, so don't worry about it. Once again, check out all of our videos on Pull My Focus for other uh, tutorials about lighting and cameras and such. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.